Hi, this is Jimmy Pascal with JP's Coin Crafts, and today we're going to show you all the processes involved in how to make a tooth fairy box. Here's one I made out of bicentennial quarters and halves. Here's some here made out of copper rounds. Half pennies and one pennies. Some more here with another one here with Liberty theme. And four that we just sold actually, made out of clad quarters and clad Kennedy halves. These are all four based on birth years. So there's no limit to the, your imagination that you can do to make one of these. We're gonna show you, you got the dome, you have a lip to the dome. This is actually made out of a, a quarter, the lip is. Got a topper, and we have the box itself. And in the bottom, get in focus. You have the base. Put the tooth in there. Wait for the tooth fairy. It's gone, and hopefully, the tooth fairy left you some money underneath it. Again, today's focus. All the tools needed, all the processes on how to make a Tooth Fairy box. Okay, we're ready to start the process of making the Tooth Fairy box. And in doing so, I needed to select the coins we're gonna be using today. And I've decided on four coins, one Kennedy half, the Eagle's gonna be the outside of the box, we have a Tennessee State Quarter that I'm going to be using for the dome. We have a National Parks Quarter, Great Smoky Mountains, that's going to be the bottom. And then for the lip that's going to be attached to the dome, we have a Washington Quarter that I just found in change. And when selecting coins, you want to make sure that they're free of defects and scratches and, and things like that that may deter the look of it uh, later on when you finish. So just try to select some nice coins. We are going to be doing some sanding and some buffing, and sometimes you can buff out the, the scratches that might be in those. But I just selected some simple coins that, you, that are readily available. You can get them at the bank, you find them in change. And um, since I'm from Tennessee, I'm using the Tennessee theme for this one. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And the first thing we need to do is go to our hydraulic press and start punching holes. So. Starting on the base with a half dollar, we'll go head on over now to the hydraulic press. I just wanted to show you the selection process of the coins we're going to be using for today. Okay, now continuing on with our tooth fairy box, we're going to be cutting a 7 16 hole in this Kennedy half dollar. We're going to punch a hole using our mega punch set from Coin Ring Tools. Legacy brand. I have everything set up now. Here's the the base of the tool. Mega punch set. Here's the lid. This is not a self-centering punch set, so you do use spacers. Okay? For the Kennedy half, the diameter is 30.5 millimeters. So that's what I have here. And this is the 7 16 die that we put in here. Okay. We have, make sure I get all this in video. The spacer then goes in. We have the Kennedy half. I'm going to put it eagle side down. Fits in there perfectly. Not going to shift around on us. We have the 7 16 punch. I put some peppy lube on it here to help as it goes through the, the lid. Put it on top. Put this on. We're ready to punch. I'm using a uh, six ton hydraulic press from Harbor Freight. I've had it now for almost three years, and it's done me well. And here, I also have it leveled up. I have like a miniature level here 
which I keep an eye on things. Make sure I can per cut a, or punch a perfect hole and go ahead and do it. Make sure everything's tightened up. 7 sixteenths is the perfect hole for making these these boxes, these tooth fairy boxes when using Kennedy halves. Just a few cranks. I'll keep on going. So I feel it kind of bottom out. Take it off. And here we have it. Now we got to take this off. So I'm going to switch over to the Arbor Press. Let's go ahead and just kind of move around. And during this video, I want to show you everything I'm doing. All the processes involved. So we need to get this off or get the coin out. We use the lid. Kind of protects the other side. Pretty easy. Got a plate here with a hole already in it. And I'm going to use my arbor press just to kind of punch this out. Now, most people say, How do I get that out? It takes a while. I mean, it doesn't take that long, but I got a little Derwin cone here that I use. And just punch the punch it out. I want to show you up close. You can see it's kind of got a sharp edge here. We need we need to go to my other station and smooth all this edge out. On this side, where the the punch went down through, it's nice and smooth. But before I go on further, any further, I need to sand this down, deburr it, get it nice and smooth before I begin the folding process. So there's my 7 16 hole, getting ready to actually make a ring. The, the you know, the, the box is simply nothing more than a ring, but we call it a tooth fairy box. So let's go ahead to our next station and talk about deburring. Okay, we're back. And before we deburr our Kennedy half dollar, I want to show you a couple tools I'm going to be using. One is this deburring coin ring holder. Trevor Flexog from Canada created this a few years ago, and this has been a lifesaver on your hands. And so it can hold all kind of different size ring, uh, coins for you to make rings. Here's the half dollar here. Just slips in, hold it, and I can deburr. And it saves, like I said, it's a lifesaver for your hands. And I'll show you that in just a second. This part, this is version two. This is for holding the coins. And this part here actually will hold a ring that you can uh, get some uh, deburr it as well when you get ready to reduce the ring or whatever. And we'll show you some of that later on. But that's the one tool, the, the holder of the coins. And you can get this from his Etsy site, uh, Trevor Flexog, the burring tool. It holds the coins. The other is actually the deburr, the burring tool itself, AFA tooling. Okay, I like this one because of, it is kind of a little fatter, a little meatier. I can hold it in my hands better. And you just simply got blades. I think when you buy this, you get 10 blades, but uh, easy to pull this down. Let's see, put in the blade and we're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start deburring that Kennedy half that we worked on and punch the hole in. So I'm going to get here and we need to get this sharp edge off right here. But first, I'm going to start just kind of in the center, just moving around. Oh, this is so much easier than holding it with my left hand, trying to hold that coin and do this. 
I don't know how many times I've slipped and cut my fingers also. I can kind of go like a little bit of a uh, 30 degree angle here and get some of that rough edge off. And that's all you need to do. You just do it until you feel like you got it made. Now, I also take some 320 grit sandpaper, put it in the hole, and help sand some of that rough edge off. Also have this pad here, get it Lowe's, Home Depot. There's all kinds of things you can do, and you just do that until you feel like it's nice and smooth. And it didn't take much, and I've already got that rough edge off before I fold. And as you saw, when I punched the 7 16th hole in this Kennedy half, I did not anneal. And it's simply because I found out, found out over the years that the dies and the punches seem to work better when I don't anneal. It's a crisper look, a crisper feel, crisper hole, everything when I don't anneal. Now I will say if I use a one ounce copper or one ounce anything, I usually anneal that coin before I punch a hole. But in this one, usually Kennedy halves and smaller, I don't feel a need to anneal. But before I fold it, I will anneal. I also have my magnifier here with, with a uh, light and I can really check closer to see if I have any cracks starting or whatever. And usually you don't until you start folding the process. But you know, you can check and see if there's anything going wrong. But that's the things I use. Magnifier, you have the Trevor Flex Hogs uh, deburring coin ring holder. And this is version two. This holds a ring. This side holds the coins. Then you have your deburring tool. So I'm going to just do a little bit more on this one and then I'm going to head over to the next station and we're going to anneal this coin before we start the folding process. Okay, we're now ready to uh, anneal our coin and quench it. And when I uh, quench the coin, I use this right here, Sparex number two. They are granules. Get it from Amazon. And I use one ounce of these granules to four ounces of water. And as you can see, I have it marked here. This is my clad solution. I only dip uh, coins that are copper or clad into this solution. I have an entirely different pickle solution for silver. I don't like to combine. If you ever drop a silver coin into this, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be coppery looking and everything else. So, and I'll be using these pliers here. And uh, I've actually, they had some grooves here. I've sanded off the grooves to just make sure that when I'm, while I'm holding the coin, I don't get an impression of those grooves on my coin when it gets hotter. So go ahead and go ahead and nail now. And quench. Go ahead and get this started. Get going here. Make sure everything's in focus. I took a sharpie and marked on the coin. A lot of times, more for silver, the sharpie mark goes away. You want to stop annealing. Uh, you know, you can almost overdo clad signs, but it's more forgiving. But I'm going to go ahead now and just start putting the heat to it. Like I said, clad coins, you're going to kneel a lot longer than others. But sometimes I've found these Kennedy has, if you do it too long, the lamination can happen and it starts flaking and things like that. And you don't want to do that. But as you can see now, the Sharpie is starting to disappear. The coin is turning a color. A lot of times, hopefully you can pick it up on video, you'll see a orange yellowish color of the fire itself start. And that gives you an idea that it's getting ready to, time to stop an ending. We're going to do this before we actually fold the coin. So just to give you an idea. I can still go a little further. A lot of times we're going to let it get going red. I don't like that. I don't mind it going a little bit further. That looks enough right there. I'm 
Okay, so I've annealed and just letting you know that if I just squished it in water, it would still look very, very dark. Uh, and, you know, this fire scale that's on there. And some people like that, you know. I also use this, uh, <laughs> it will spew big time if I don't use cover it up a little bit. So here it goes. Just quenched it. All right. Go ahead now put it in the baking soda water bath. And I'll just clean this thing. Get all the water off, make it dry it off. And we're ready now to do the folding process. So let me get my camera fixed up ready for the folding process. It don't, it's not like I have to do it right away as far as folding, but I'm going to go ahead and get it ready. So that's how you anneal before you fold. We're now going to get ready to fold our Kennedy half dollar and the first die we're going to use is a stabilizing die. This is King's coin ring tools. Skip King made these. Uh, this is, is actually made for half dollars and I like to use it. It stabilizes. Just put it in. I'm going to actually put in eagle side down because that's the part you want to be on the outside of the coin box. Tooth Fairy box. I've already nailed it. Now I'm going to use a starter cone. And these are great. It, it really helps alleviate wonkiness on your initial fold. Just starter cone. I actually put some coconut oil. I use that a lot on all my dies before I fold. So just simply, I'm using my arbor press, put the starter cone in, and do the initial fold. I'll just go down until I can't go any further. Take that out. Now I have a quarter inch stainless steel cone. And for these, when I make these, I like to just go right to the next one. I don't even take this out of the, out of the uh, stabilizing die. Put this in, and I'm going to do the second fold. It'll straighten itself up when I touch it here with Arbor Press. So, the second fold. Okay. I'm not going to do a third fold with the stabilizing die. Usually, I can get away with doing two folds. Okay. Now you get to see what it's starting to look like. Hole is getting bigger. We're making a ring. On this. Next I'm going to use a 17 degree die from Legacy Brand Tools and let's just see. Yeah I need to use the 1.20 side. You want to make sure that the lip, the reed edge is not on the outside of this rim here. So you just line it up. Make sure it's lined up correctly. I've also put co coconut oil in this. And just keep on. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's nice and lined up. I'm now going to use a half inch stainless steel cone to do a third fold. Won't have to be much on this one. Again, I've annealed this coin. We've seen it. And just go oh, down. All right. That's going to speed up the process from the ring stretcher. Take this off. Straight this down. Right, let's see if I can give you an idea here. Come up. Three folds. One annealing and then three folds. I can feel it getting work hardened a little bit. So that's why I went and stopped. Because next. I'm going to kneel this coin again, come in a ring now with a tooth fairy box. There you go. 
and I'm going to anneal it and then I'm going to get ready to put it on the ring stretcher. So stretch it out. This needs to be stretched out to about, this is my formula, about a, uh, 13 and a half, probably the largest, maybe 14 you can get by with it, but 13 and a half, 14 inch ring. And then I'll have to reduce it down to 11, 11 and a half. And that should be the perfect size for the base and the box for our tooth fairy box. So let's go ahead and I'm going to kneel it again. I'm not going to show you the kneeling process again. We'll go ahead and kneel it and get it ready for the ring stretcher. Okay, I've now re annealed this uh, coin and getting ready to continue on with the ring stretcher. I just wanted to show you that through the three initial folds, we actually got it to about a five and a half. So that's where we're at now. And our goal is to get it to a 13 and a half. If we get it to 13 and a half, I'll just show you here. Our goal is to get, let's get here. This is the cut side here on top. The goal is to get it to be the same size as this quarter. Because quarter is going to eventually attach to the cut side. We've got a long way to go right now. Again, this is opening is just five and a half. This is the reed side. That's where the reed side. The opposite side is always called the cut side. So let's go ahead now to the ring stretcher. I'm not going to stretch it all the way to a 13 for you, but I am going to go ahead and give you an idea of my technique. I use caution tape. Got a roll of this from, you know, Home Depot. I think I paid $8 for it. I've had it for like two years. But I like to use, you know, here plastic bags, you hear all kind of things that people wrap around their paper towels, you know, around the ring stretcher. For me, I like the plastic caution tape. It's a little thicker than bags, and I double wrapped it. Uh, but it, it helps to save detail on the inner part of the ring, if you're ever making a ring. So here we go. Just put cut side down. Really, when I have this closed up, it's going to be right at a 13 and a half. But I put it on, kind of hold it nice and steady. I do short strokes and turn it a quarter turn. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. And I just keep doing that all the way down. Like I said, I've annealed it and it's like butter right now. Just to let you know too that after I annealed it, before I put it on this ring stretcher, I checked it again. The cut side for any cracks and it looks pretty good no cracks no tears anything like that and I'll check it again for any cut you know any tears gotta make sure this is nice and level and firm before you continue on down now of course plastic any of this plastic is going to end up tearing so it's now And if I feel it's getting work hardened, I'll stop and I'll probably, I will anneal again before I get it to a 13 and a half. And let's just stop right here. Let's see where we're at. We've gone from five and a half to an eight. So we're at an eight. I'll check it and make sure there's no tears. I'll put it underneath my magnifier and look and just make sure if it is, I need to sand some areas like that. But as you can see, nice and easy. And I'm going to go ahead now and continue on and get it down or get it to size 13 and a half. 14 maybe, but 13 and a half is probably where I want to go with it. Okay. But we'll just continue on with the ring stretcher and get it to 13 and a half. Okay, went ahead and stretched the ring on out. Actually, I have it about a 13 and three quarters, right at a 14. I want to kind of give you an idea of that. Did that all with the ring stretcher. But our goal is to get it down to about 11 to 11 and a half. The reed side will be 11, and the cut side will be 11 and a half. Usually how these things go. 
and we wanted the quarter to be able to match up the same diameter as this cut side. Also, I went back and talked about deburring. I deburred, before you reduce, and this is what people don't understand, I can start reducing and then maybe I get frustrated because the ring gets wonky, gets wavy and all this kind of thing, but you really need to start taking what they call taking some meat off that reed side. And as you can see, I went ahead and deburred a little bit of rim area inside there all the way around. It took off a lot of meat. That way when it starts reducing, it's not going to be wonky on you. It's not going to get wavy on you. And also made sure I checked no tears or anything, but I went ahead and deburred just a couple strokes around with the deburring tool and deburred the edge on the inside. On the inside, both the reed and the cut side. Now, different from what other people do is a lot of people like to use their Arbor Press to reduce. I love to use my hydraulic press to reduce. Put the 17 degree die is what I'm going to start with. 17 degree using the 1.20 side. Put the reed side down because it's larger than the, the cut side right now. And I'm just going to and you got to get the feel of this. It's the only way I can explain it. You just have to get the feel. I'm trying to get the camera where you can see without my hands in the way. But I need to start reducing. And this is the tedious part of making this box. Basically making a ring size 11, 11 and a half. And I'm just going to, it's, it's touching now. Feels some resistance. And I'm just going to, like I said, I've already nailed about three little strokes. This is when you just got to take your time. And you can see now it's getting smaller. Let's see what it is. I don't think I'm going to have to kneel anymore either. Okay, so it's already jumped up. Okay, to about just about 13 and a half. Let's go ahead and I'll still put the Read side down. And I'll end up having to use the 1.0 side to continue on to get it to that 11. Now it's taking that shape of a ring, not getting wonky on me. And let's see if it'll go in the other side. Yes, so I can go ahead now on the 1.1 side. Let's just look. Yep, let's go ahead and continue with the reed side. And just give it another little push. Hydraulic press, just a little nudge. Now I've got the feel of this. Just press it down, maybe a little more, that's it. And you just got to play with it. Now it's getting even lower. I'll go ahead and put the cut side in. And I put coconut oil, coconut oil on the inside of my die there. 17 degree. I'm not going to use a 25 degree. If I did that, it'd be curled edges. I kind of want more of a flat walled ring here. Just a little, just a little bit of a nudge. Let's go ahead and get, let's see, let's check it again and see where we're at now. Oh, right, we're at a twelve, so we got another size to go before this reed side again. It'll straighten up once I touch it. There we go. Oh yeah, it's taking good shape now. Let's go ahead and do the cut side. Getting it closer and closer. Oh, just knock the camera a little bit. Let's continue on. Let's look at see what we have it now. Oh, it's getting there.
maybe the three quarters for the cut side. But this is what something else we start doing. We take down the quarter and we look at it, put it up to the cut side. The cut side's still bigger. It's larger than the quarter. So I need to do some more on this cut side. And like I said, tedious. You put it back in on the cut side and just slow, just ever so slow. And just, just a little nudge, just a, that's it right there. Let's see how it looks like now with the quarter. Oh yeah, and see that's matching up. So you just gotta keep on going. I still need to go another tug or two. I'm also gonna be sanding this cut side down and I'll show you that in just a second. But that's how you do it to get your tooth fairy box, the shape you need and reducing and you just keep on until you everything matches up. So let me go ahead and stop the vi uh, video now. And I'm going to take you over to the station again. I'm going to do a little sanding and give you, give you an idea how we finish up this part one of the video. It looks like I'm going to have to end up doing two parts because I don't want to go an hour with a video. But I've, this one is going to be about 30 minutes long. And I'll do a part one and part two. Part two will be with the dome and the lip and all that and attaching it. So there we go. Okay, we're back to finish up the uh, two fairy box we've been working on. And this is our Kennedy half. Just want to show you that our goal was to get it at 11 to 11 and a half. And the read side, as you can see, is at 11. And the cut side is at 11 and a half. So we reached our goal. Nice time to clean this up. Okay, so let's go ahead down to our station. Now let me get on over here and show you that our friend, for all coin ring makers, for cleaning things up, is zero 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 steel wool right here this stuff here is great for cleaning our coin rigs and what we're going to do is clean our edges okay we need to clean our cut edge and the reed edge and the outside you know we did quench it but that doesn't clean everything off it gets all the fire scale off but we need to go ahead and shine it up a bit and what I have here is um, from Coin Ring Tools, have a small, medium, and large uh, cones, the rubber cones. They're called a Coin Ring Polish and, and Finish Kit. And so you have a smaller one here. You can buy these. You put your rings on. And it helps you, you put, use a drill and you can clean them up. This is a small, this is a medium, and we have a large. So I'll leave everything in the comments below the video and where you can buy these. But you simply put these on, then you tighten them up, and then you got your steel wool here, and just, that's why I'm wearing gloves, because you kind of want to protect your hands some, and you just start, let the drill go, and clean up the edges. Then you can also clean, clean all the fire scale off. You can see it right before your eyes. And this is the technique I use to clean these off. It's kind of hot too. I know these are, are consumable items, but I probably had these for a few years now. All right, let's go ahead and put the reed side on now first. And I can get this edge, this cut side. And I tighten it up. Try to get it where it's not going to be wobbly on you. So I might have to loosen up a little bit. There we go. Then this time I can concentrate on this cut edge. Okay. 
2K. Let's take it off and get a closer look. All right, let's get you a closer look here. Just a little bit of time. And can you see now how that just four zero 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 steel wool has cleaned this up. The edge is smoother. That's the cut edge. And you have the outside, the edges, nice and smooth. Shining them up. I'll take zero, I'll take the, the zero, 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 <laughs> still wool and clean up the inside too. But there's another thing. To get the quarter to fit on here, and I'm going to be attaching it later in, in the part two video, I need uh, I need to go ahead and sand this down, this cut edge down. And I'll show you now. I've taken a metal plate, put a 120 grit sandpaper on. I'll move this a little closer. glued on here and just simply gonna have to get it flat put it on here and just go back and forth this nice and flat this cut edge side so when we get our quarter here we go get our quarter it's gonna go on the bottom and it's gonna fit really nice Hopefully you can pick that up. But that's now pretty much how we get the box part of the Tooth Fairy box built. And I'm not going to put any of these things together until I get the dome completed with the topper and then the extension of the dome, which I call the lip. And that's going to be on part two. And we'll finish the entire Tooth Fairy box in the part two video. But for right now, go ahead and sign off and I'm going to start on the part two video. But this is part one. I hope you enjoyed how to make and learn some things along the way on how to make not only a ring, you know, but we're going to turn this, in, like I said, into a Tooth Fairy box. People call it pill box, trinket box. Uh, I tell you what, since I've named it a Tooth Fairy box, the sales have skyrocketed. So, there we go. Thank you so much.